Okay, hey everyone. Today we're going to be talking about um, rational points on the circle. Okay, so um, I plan to be following uh, Silverman and Tate's book, Rational Points on Elliptic Curves. So this is part of the first section. And so I guess suppose you have the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 and so let's just draw that in our axes and right away you can sort of figure out some of the integer solutions or the integer solutions you have plus or minus 1 0 and 0 plus or minus 1 um, for convenience we're going to pick this to be our sort of like origin point and uh, that's a solution on th to this equation. That's a point on the circle. And so um, one thing we want to do is we want to figure out how to generate all the rational points. And so one way to do that with conics is to draw lines. Because a line will intersect conic in two places. And you can sort of uh, create this one-to-one -one correspondent between rational points on the line and rational points on the conic, our circle. So let that be like x, y, and then this point we'll call it 0, t. And we don't know yet if t is rational or not, or even if x, y is rational or not, but we want them to be. Um, and so one th we call this line L, and one thing we could do is we can say, okay, what's the equation of this line? So we could use uh, point slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we could pick this point. Uh, this point is negative 1, 0. So x1, y1 equals negative 1, 0. And the slope is the change in y over the change in x, right? So it's t minus 0 over 0 minus negative 1, which is t. And so the equation for our line is y minus 0, or so y equals m, that's t, times x minus negative 1, so x plus 1. And we can rewrite the equation for our circle as um, y squared equals 1 minus x squared. So now we can solve this. We can solve this using substitution. So we can just sub in y, and we get t squared times 1 plus x squared equals 1 minus x squared. And I c we can recognize that this is a difference of squares, so we can write that as uh, 1 plus x times 1 minus x. Um, and so one thing you might see is that um, for a fixed t, we have a quadratic in x. And um, if we go back here, we know that negative 1, 0 is a solution to the system because it's both on the line and on the circle. And so we can cancel out a factor of x minus negative 1 or x plus 1 from this because that's one of our solutions. And um, you'll see if like t and x are rational, then you know both solutions have to be rational that have rational coefficients. Um, so anyway, you cancel out a 1 plus x, and then we get t times 1 plus x equals uh, t squared, sorry, times 1 plus x equals 1 minus x. And now we're ready to solve for x. If we solve for x, we have, let's see, t squared plus t squared x equals 1 minus x. So t squared minus 1 equals x. Um, negative x minus t squared x. So let's multiply both sides by negative 1. And we get 1 minus t squared equals x plus t squared x. So this gives, finally, x equals 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Great.
And so now we have that. And this page is a little dirty. So let's go to the next one. And so we have x equals 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Now we know y equals t times x plus 1. So we plug in x, we get y equals uh, t times 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared over 1 minus t squared. Oops, t squared. Which is 2. Um, let's see. Oh, this should be plus. My bad. That should be plus. And then, and then you get two t over one plus t squared. Um, so that's our parameterization for the circle. And you see that if we pick t to be rational, then x and y are rational. So we can get all the rational points by just picking rational slopes t. And the same thing will work vice versa. Um, if we have a rational point x, y, that forces t to be rational. And so um, there's some other cool properties you can get from this. For example, um, if I go back to this diagram, and I draw this line here, and I call this theta, then um, we know x equals cosine theta, and y equals sine theta. Um, which, is, which is nice, but if you notice, um, theta cuts out this arc, but so does L and the x-axis, right? This also cuts out this arc, and it goes way back here, but this is a central angle, and so if this sweeps out the same arc, it has to be half of this angle. So this is theta over 2. Now what does that tell us? Well, that tells us if we calculate this, um, this slope again, right? Instead of using 0 and t, we use x, y, and negative 1, 0. We get that the slope, and by the way, the slope is tan of theta over 2. The slope is equal to y minus 0 over x plus 1, or sine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. So we instantly have the uh, half angle identity for tan uh, that we got from the circle. So that's pretty cool. Um, and so you can do a lot of different stuff with like integrating um, functions with sines and cosines, because what this also tells you is that you can write cosine theta as like 1 minus t squared or 1 plus t squared for rational t, and sine theta as 2t over 1 plus t squared. And um, one last thing, which I think is uh, super cool. Um, so, since t is rational, you can write it as like m over n, where gcd of m n equals 1. And I might rush this last part because I want this to be around 10 minutes. But um, if we just plug things in, we get x equals n squared minus m squared over m squared plus n squared, y equals, uh, let's see, 2mn over m squared plus n squared. And so then, if you have x squared plus y squared equals 1, you can multiply through by m squared plus n squared, and you get n squared minus m squared squared plus 2mn squared equals m squared plus n squared squared. But these are all integers, because m and n are integers, and this looks just like the Pythagorean theorem. And so this actually gives us a way to generate um, primitive Pythagorean triples. Alright, that's it for today.